Hello and welcome to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. Time Magazine's Person of the Year, Francis the Catholic Pontiff. According to the managing editor, the Pope changed the tone and perception of the Roman Catholic Church. This may be so, but Francis also is showing himself to be critical of the global economic order and capitalism. Is there hope for the Church, or is Francis merely a PR product? To Crosstalk Pope Francis, I'm joined by my guest Jamila Bay in Washington. She is a journalist and public speaker. Also in Washington, we have Alejandro Shafwen. He is the president of the Atlas Economic Research Foundation. And in Madison, we cross to Scott Rickard. He is an expert on Catholicism, as well as the executive editor of Chronicles, a magazine of American culture. All right, Crosstalk rules in effect. That means you can jump in anytime you want, and I very much encourage, encourage it. Alejandro in Washington, per person of the year, well-deserved? Yes, for sure. Uh, few people have such uh, respect as, as the Pope and few institutions as the Catholic Church still has uh, so much prestige and so much influence around, on the, around the globe. So I'm, I'm elated. Okay. Jamila, are you elated that uh, Pope Francis is Time Magazine's Person of the Year? It is despicable. Despairing, despairing to me that I've got to support Miley Cyrus. Pope Francis as a choice for Person of the Year was absolutely wrong in every measure from Time Magazine. Uh, this pope, as you put it in your intro so aptly earlier, is a product of PR. He's not this major reformer who's coming in and making sweeping changes to benefit the lives of the faithful. He is more of the same, and unfortunately, uh, that's a problem. He should not have been picked. Okay, Scott, uh, would you differentiate the two? Because it's very interesting what we've heard already in this program is that, I mean, it, it may be very possible that Francis is a PR product, and, you know, he's very appealing to a lot of people. I mean, even I look at the pictures of him uh, embracing a man with a severe um, uh, disfigurement. I mean, any person that has compassion can say, that's, that's a, a good person doing that, as opposed to kind of... Where is the Catholic Church? Because it looks like you can easily separate the two. Go ahead, Scott. Right. It's certainly, uh, he certainly is appealing. The, um, the, the idea, though, that, uh, that he was ever going to come in and change the Catholic Church in the way that, uh, that I think uh, Jamila or, uh, or some of the editors of, uh, of Time might want uh, uh, was, was wrong from the, uh, from the beginning. What, uh, what he has brought to, uh, to the Catholic Church is a change in tone, a change in emphasis. The Time uh, article does pick up on that, but it also expresses a sort of hope and expectation that there's going to be some sort of more fundamental change, uh, doctrinal changes, moral changes. Uh, these aren't going to come about. Uh, the Catholic Church uh, uh, is a 2,000-year-old institution that, uh, that understands uh, uh, what, the, uh, what it is supposed to be teaching, and, uh, and the Pope would not have been elected if, uh, if he were going to teach something other than, uh, mm. than what he should be teaching. Oh, Hunter, that's a very interesting point, because you can have a new Pope, but you still have the old church. Yes. Among the Catholics in the United States, at least in the poll that was released yesterday, it is the conservative Catholics that have more doubt, because they fear that there might be coming a change to the fundamental truths and doctrines of the Church. But I agree with Scott that that will not happen. You know, uh, this Pope is very well trained. He's not a product of PR, as Jamila said. Uh, he did not live through the horrors of Soviet communism, as Karol Wojtyla and John Paul II did. He did not live through the madness of Hitler, as uh, Benedict uh, Ratzinger in his youth. But he lived through very conflictive periods in Argentina, uh, the killings of the 70, both by the left and from the right. He saw crony capitalism firsthand. He remained in that culture of Argentina, full of corruption, completely clean and impeccable, learning to, live, uh, to listen to many different sides. Listen, I don't like, you know, I'm a very a great a fan and advocate of the importance of free enterprise and the free economy. But there are many other important freedoms, more important of all for the Pope is, is spiritual freedom. 
And I think here his tone, uh, the way that he's reaching out, you know, it's, it, it's the first step in, in his role as, as a pontiff. Michael Novak, perhaps a representative of what you some would call a conservative Catholicism, he used to say that well, what a pity that we have such stupendous popes as John Paul II and Paul Benedict. People will think that the church is made by men. Uh, as Roman Catholics, we have to trust the Holy Spirit, and I'm confident, you know, that the Holy Spirit will guide well, the church. Jamila, if, well, let's, let's talk will, about the Holy Spirit here, hoops. because if people don't have a problem with the Holy Spirit, they have a lot of problems with the Catholic Church's doctrine. That's what they have a problem with. Well, you know, here's the thing. When you bring in a new head of the organization, you do so to address the fundamental issues that are that are a cancer in the organization. And let's be very clear about this. While uh, while this pope, Pope Francis, has spoken out against uh, capitalism, you know, negative capitalism, uh, making money as a god, and I'm I'm heavily paraphrasing there. Um, Let's be real. Jesus and the temple turned over the money changers' tables. That's doctrine that all Christians can agree on. That's nothing new and radical. Um, this pope has yet to address the major issues that are plaguing Catholicism right now. He has, he has appointed a commission to look into the abuse of children. But keep in mind, this is a pope who, a few years ago, said that homosexuals adopting children is a form of child abuse. I think this is a pope who absolutely would understand what is child abuse. When you look at the scandals of child rape and child abuse in Latin America, in Argentina, and you know that this is a pope who, before he was a pope, was privy to that knowledge. When you look at the fact that this pope chose to dismiss a few of his cardinals and whatnot, but he left in place someone from Germany who, in 2004, moved a known pedophile priest and said, well, you know, our therapist said that he's not going to reoffend. This is the type of thing that is driving the faithful away. This is the type of thing that is making it impossible for people who love and care for children to support this institution. And yes, it's wonderful that he's appointed a commission, but why do you need to study that child rape is wrong? Okay, Scott, if I can go back to you and, and Madison, I mean, you know, what we just heard is, you know, the problems within the church here. It looks like Francis has a two-prong approach here. He's trying to appeal to Catholics that have been discouraged by the, the scandals that we've had for, like, almost 20 years now. And he's also trying to reach out to the uh, other religions here. I mean, washing the feet of a Muslim girl, which, you know, in this day and age, that's kind of an important visual that you can have here. I mean, can he say something new? Can he do something new, considering he has different constituencies as head of the church to address? Well, he can say things in a, uh, in a new way, or he can renew our understanding of the central message of the, uh, of the gospel. And that's the, uh, that's the important point. If we look at uh, John Paul II, we could say that John Paul II was a philosopher pope. He was, uh, he was um, heavily influenced by Edmund Husserl. Uh, 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 Benedict XVI was a theologian pope. Um, Francis is very much a pastor pope. Um, in the mold of, uh, of John the 23rd or even uh, uh, Pius X, two very different men, but, uh, but men who, uh, who were very concerned with a pastoral approach to the, uh, to the papacy. And, uh, and Francis, I think, for that, uh, that reason, is exactly the right man at exactly the right time. Well, Scott, let me, this, let me, uh, this let me idea ask you a that question here. Let, let, let me away. ask you a question here, because I think that's a very good point, and she strikes me as being the same way, a pastor pope. But you know, it, the corruption in the Catholic Church is horrific. I lived in Poland in the 1980s. It wasn't communist Poland. It was Catholic Poland. And it's, if you live there, that could turn you instantly off from Catholicism because of corruption. Well, uh, uh, there, there are problems with uh, corruption in any institution. The question is, how are these, uh, how are these things addressed? For instance, the, uh, the, the claims that the, uh, that the Catholic Church has not addressed the, uh, the issue of child sexual abuse 
is just ludicrous for anybody who's actually studied this. I've been writing about, uh, about this issue for 15 years now in various uh, uh, publications. I know this uh, material inside and out. The fact is that, uh, that the instances of, of child sexual abuse currently occurring in the Catholic Church today are almost non-existent. The cases that, uh, that have uh, made the news, the cases that, uh, that were uncovered and that were talked about at, uh, uh, for years now are cases that go back 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. The worst cases, in fact, are, uh, are 40 to 50 years old. The problem has been addressed and the, uh, the cleanup was done primarily by Pope Benedict the, uh, the 16th when he, was, uh, when he was head of the Congregation for the, uh, for the Doctrine of the Faith, when he asked uh, Pope John Paul II to put the, the authority to, uh, to clean this mess up under his, uh, his command. And, uh, and he continued it during, uh, during the time that, uh, that he was Okay, we're going to uh, go to a, sh a short break the, uh, just real quickly. Jamila in, in Washington, over. you look extremely unhappy here. Okay, I'll give you 20 seconds before we go to the break. Go ahead. German, uh, German prefect Gerhard Ludwig Mueller in 2000 knew that priest Paul Kramer had molested children. In 2004, moved that same priest to a different parish, did not disclose. That's 10 years ago, and this is someone who this current pope has allowed to continue in his in his post. That's a problem. He's okay. not the only All one. All right, we're going to go and, to a short break. We're going to go to a short break, and after that short break, we'll continue our discussion on Pope Francis. Stay with RT. <laughs> Welcome back to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. To remind you, we're discussing Time Magazine's Person of the Year, Pope Francis. Okay, Alejandro, I'd like to go back to you in Washington. Uh, Pope Francis uh, ruffled a lot of feathers with one of his first writings, and it was very critical of global capitalism and finance. And it, when I read it, I read it very carefully because I think it's very interesting, and it's very much an echo of the lib liberation theology that we had in the 1970s in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, and he got a lot of negative press for that in the media over the last few weeks for, for writing that. Um, is, uh, being a pastoral pope, as we've heard earlier in this program, uh, do you think that this, he's going to be a pope of the poor? Because um, capitalism, however you want to describe it, um, uh, makes a small number of people rich and a lot of people poor. At least in, in 2013, that's the case. Well, no, he, he, in this document he said you know, he is uh, a pastor for the rich and and for the poor. Before I answer in detail, you know, I, I think I sympathize with Jamila. It's, it's such a scandal to have people in moral authority abuse of their power, and especially uh, with, with, with young boys or, or, or young girls, and betraying the trust, you know, that the community has on them. We have seen also other sinful priests, you know, and hierarchy dealing in, in monetary issues. Sin will always exist, will always be with us, you know, and, but again, when you look at all institutions around the world, I think few institutions have st withstood, you know, the test of time uh, as the Catholic Church, so I'm confident, you know, this is a good choice even for cleaning up the church and Pope uh, Francis even decided to live outside the bureaucratic headquarters and went to live to Domus Santa Marta, uh, this austere but nice building next to St. Peter. Going back to what you said, uh, the Pope never issued the word capitalism in this document, not a single uh, time. He said on serious matters, uh, you have to go to the compendium of social docking of the church, where the point 42 of Centesimo Sanos uh, figures clearly a capitalism with rule of law based on the dignity of the human person is totally consistent with uh, the doctrine of the Catholic Church. Now, a capitalism as we have today, 
who is crony capitalism, who are those who are close to the government, uh, receive all the privileges. It's a capitalism which, whose bounty doesn't reach all the poor. Uh, ca capitalism with corruption. Corruption disaffects disproportionately the poor. So we see an inequality that is fruit of what I say. It's an unequal distribution of economic freedom. Only those close to power feel that they have freedom. The other people feel disadvantaged. And I think the Pope, with his experience in Argentina, where he sees the division of wealth, division of culture, political divisions, will relate well to three quarters of the world that doesn't have okay. rule of law, well, you know, and they okay. only see a okay. parody of capitalism. If I capitalism. go to Scott, I mean, but reading what he wrote, and it was about capitalism, even if the word wasn't mentioned, it was very clear it was about capitalism. Scott, I mean, again, being this pastoral pope, I mean, he's going to be the champion of the poor, at least on TV and, 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 and with uh, um, uh, pic, uh, pictures with great, great leaders and whatnot. I mean, he can be that portrayed as that, but can he actually do it is another question right here because um, the, the Catholic Church has had this opportunity for about 2,000 years now and it still really hasn't pulled through for the people. Oh, oh uh, uh, Peter, I can't believe you just said that. I mean, when, when you look at the history of the, uh, of the Catholic Church and you look at the history of, uh, of the treatment of the poor uh, over the past 2,000 years, what institution has done more for the poor than the, uh, than the Catholic Church? Where did hospitals develop? Hospitals were developed by the Catholic Church, by Catholic uh, monastic orders. Where did schools develop? Again, universities. This is all a, a but development Scott, at the of same the, time, uh, the Catholic Church. They have always Church. been on the, the right, uh, the side, the right that, uh, side of, of power, always with power. And if you have such a large church and you have such a figurehead of, of the papacy, well, it's, it's about time they have the power and they have the message. It just seems that they're very much in power, in bed with power all of the time. This is why a lot of right-wing pundits in the United States oh, oh, called them, on, called them, a, a, called them a, a Marxist. Called him a Marxist. This is a, this is I, I can't believe that uh, uh, Scott and I are in the We can't on all talk over at the same time. Jamila, go ahead. In Washington, go ahead. Uh, here's the thing. Um, here's a very easy fix. Render unto Caesar. Uh, if, if there was a time in this country, I am a product of Catholic education. Make no bones about it. Um, the travel I've done around the world, the, the career I have now is because of my Catholic education, and I am deeply thankful for that. Uh, I even went through five years of Catholic university. I know my doctrine well. However, let's talk about hospitals for just a moment. The ACLU is suing the Catholic hospitals for not providing the standard of care for women's reproductive health. That's a problem. Uh, when the doctrine of the church says, well, we will put our faith tradition above the summit of our medical knowledge, the summit of our, biology, our biological knowledge, that's a problem, particularly here in the U.S. Now, the issue Jamila, of capitalism— there will be an even bigger problem. Uh, if he, if, Go ahead, Scott. You want to reply to that real quick? Go ahead, Scott. There, there, there will be an What's even bigger, bigger problem, problem if, uh, if Catholic hospitals in the United States start shutting down because the government is forcing Catholic doctors, Catholic nurses, uh, those uh, who support Catholic hospitals to act against the teachings of their faith. Then you'll see exactly oh, how tosh, much the Catholic friend. Church has done no, in the healthcare uh, uh, field. You would not abide by a Jehovah's uh, Witness uh, doctor saying, Scott, I'm not going to save your baby. He's going to bleed out because I will not transfuse him with blood. You wouldn't abide by it, and no one else would. But because it's only women who are told, well, let her die. There's a heartbeat in that fetus, and she's, and she's going into because sepsis. Because it's only women. We, by the, the way, uh, at, uh, Jamila, the I, am, uh, I am married, the world and looked I have at eight Ireland children. And said, and, uh, and I do know a little bit about, uh, about women and children mm -hmm. and the care that, uh, that they uh, should and Very do well. receive at Catholic hospitals. Do deserve. Absolutely. Now, here's the thing. Give the standard of care. It's that simple. Catholic hospitals 
must give the standard of care. The world looked at Ireland and said, how dare you let that, that doctor die? That's, that's unconscionable. But here in Arizona, we saw where a Catholic hospital, a nurse decided uh, it is better to abort a pregnancy that cannot continue, that will kill this woman and leave her children motherless. That nun, who was also a nurse, who acted in accordance with the best of our medical knowledge, was excommunicated. There hasn't been a pedophile priest excommunicated, but a nurse saying, I will save the life of this patient. I will save the patient I okay. care. All right, all that right. is right. completely contrary. Okay, okay, okay. Alejandro, we, we, we let's move on save here. Right? Women's very, lives. very good, very good uh, uh, debate between you two. Yeah. Uh, Alejandro, I want to pull you back in here. Um, we have a pope with a nice smile and, and, and a charismatic um, uh, uh, presence here. But what about doctrine? Uh, is he going to deal? Because you, we, there are millions and millions of Catholics in the world still very disaffected by some of the church's stance on uh, birth control, abortion, gay rights. And we've heard some nice things coming from the pope. But again, I'm sorry, I'm a bit. I'm very skeptical. It seems like a very good PR job to me. Well, I don't think it's going to change the doctrine about the life of the babies in wombs, you know, about homosexuality. You know, he will, he, we, Catholics, we have to love the, the homosexuals, you know, but uh, we don't have to redefine words or redefine marriage to express, uh, express that love. So I don't expect any change about that. You spoke before, you know, here in the United States, many conservative anchors are calling the Pope. Uh, a Marxist. He adhered to part of liberation theology about the one that, uh, listening to the people, how it flows from the people, and paying attention to a more uh, democratic way of discussing topics in the Catholic Church. But he was accused by the Marxists, and he never signed the documents adhering to a Marxist interpretation of history. And part of the confusion comes from that. I thought that Jamila was going to go saying, let the great professionals, the great economists, the late the great medical doctors practice their profession, practice their discipline with total freedom following the religion uh, that they believe. You know, that our country, the United States, has been blessed by religious liberty. And I think that now by having even uh, a groups like the ACLU uh, suing, obliging us, you know, uh, who are Roman Catholic, to behave in certain fashion and give certain type of counseling to people is very dangerous. And I think what in economics, I think what will happen is that the debate will revert to us, the lay expert. The Pontifical Council not only has uh, Gary Becker, who is a free market uh, champion from the University of Chicago, they have people like George Stiglitz, who is the defender of the third way in the Pontifical Council of Social Sciences. But the debate on these issues, I think, corresponds to the best scientists, as Jamila said, but I don't like the, the governments uh, imposing their views down the throat of the Catholic religion, the Jewish religion, or any other religion that respects human dignity. Okay, Scott. What, what do you want to see from this pontificate? Okay, he's off to a good start. I think everyone would agree, at least from, from again, a PR perspective. Right. Well, one thing I'd like to see, and this follows up on what uh, Alejandro said, you know, there's not going to be a change in, uh, in moral doctrine. But what we need to do is to explain better to the world why those moral doctrines exist, why these moral teachings of the Catholic Church exist. And this is exactly what, uh, what Francis, I think, has been doing and is po uh, posed well to, uh, to do, that, uh, that he is helping us to understand that the moral teachings of the Catholic Church flow from the gospel message. They flow from the central relationship of each person with Jesus Christ. And that once you have that relationship, once you have that proper relationship, you understand why the church teaches what it does about the dignity of every human being all right, all right. from conception on a, Ending on a very, very death. good point here. We've run out of time. Many thanks to my guests in Washington and in Madison. And thanks to our viewers for watching us here at RT. See you next time. And remember, Crosstalk Rules. I love you. I love you.